Glory, 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 glory. Hallelujah. Good morning, good morning, seeds of greatness. Come on, let's give God a shout of praise. We welcome you online. We welcome you to Seeds of Greatness Bible Church. Today is a blessed and wonderful day because our God is alive and well when he reigns with all power. Hallelujah. We praise you, Father. Feel free to walk up on, feel free to come on down front and worship with us. Amen. Here we go. We praise you, Father. Blessings on blessings on blessings. Blessings on blessings on blessings. Here we go. Here we go. We give you glory. Every time I turn around, blessings, blessings, blessings. Every time I turn around, blessings or blessings. Oh, every time I turn around, blessings, blessings, blessings. Come every time I turn around, there will be blessings or blessings. Everybody say, every time I turn around, I say blessings, blessings. Every time I turn around, there will be blessings or blessings. Blessings, 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 every time I Hallelujah. turn around. Blessings, oh blessings. The favor of the Lord rests upon me. In my hands I have more than enough. Hey, more than enough. So holy goodness and mercy is following me. And my God will supply every one of my needs. Say, the favor of the Lord rests upon me. In my hands, I have more than I got enough. more than enough, yeah. Surely goodness and mercy is following me. Following me. And my God and will supply every yes, one of my needs. Yes, it will. Everybody say, every time I turn around, blessings, blessings, blessings. Power. power, we say power. 
A week for miracles. See, this week will be a week for miracles. See, this week will be a week for miracles. See, this week will be a week for miracles. See, this week we claim, we claim it, we claim it, we claim it, we claim it. A week for miracles. See, this week. Will be, will be a week for miracles, 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 miracles. 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 Oh. I cannot, I, I cannot explain it. This, this may not make sense, but I know, I know what it looks like. But I choose, like, but I choose, but to I choose oh, I and I'm speaking. I'm speaking something different. I'm speaking, I'm speaking something different. I'm claiming. I'm claiming. I'm speaking, I'm aiming, expecting, oh, so this week will be a week for miracles, so this week will be a week for miracles, so this week will be a week for miracles, miracles, miracles. I'm going to praise him. I'm going to praise him now because I believe No matter what I'm going through, say, I don't have to wait. I don't have to wait. I choose to praise him. I choose to bless him in spite of the storm, in spite of the rain. Because I believe it. Hey, hey, say, I don't have to wait. I don't have to wait till I see it. Oh, I'm going to praise him. We give you glory. We give you water, Lord. I don't have to wait. I don't have to wait. Oh, I'm a praise him. I'm a praise oh, him now. Cause I believe Your miracle is on. Your miracle is on the way. Get ready. 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 Your miracle is on the way. You gotta believe it. Your miracle is on the way. You gotta believe it. Your miracle is on the way. You gotta believe it. Your miracle is on the way. I know what it looks like, but I choose to go against that. And I'm speaking something different. I'm speaking something different. I'm claiming something different. Expecting something different. Say, I cannot explain it. This may not I don't care what it looks like. I know what it looks like, but I choose to go Because we have the word to stand on. That we can have what we say. That we can have what we say. All things are possible to them that believe. I cannot explain it. This may not make sense. But I know on the inside. On the inside. And I'm speaking. I'm speaking. I'm claiming. Expanding. If you're expecting something different, give him a shout of praise. Hallelujah. We believe in you, God. We believe in you, God. Hallelujah. 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 Come on, and we want 
something different. We have to believe for it. We've got to believe for it. Do you believe today? Hallelujah. Oh, God, we worship you in this place. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus.
believers do I have in here today? The scripture goes on to say that God is not a man that he should lie, nor the son of man that he should repent. Hath he said it, and will he not do it? Hath he spoken it, and will he not make it good? I want you to know today that he will move things that look like they are immovable. I want you to know that he will break things that it looks like it's unbreakable. I want you to know from impossibility, he will move you to a miracle. If you believe that, give God a shout of praise and thanksgiving. Hallelujah. Don't you let your heart be discouraged. Don't you let your heart be troubled. You believe in God. Believe also in me. Can you say amen to that? All things are possible. There is no impossibility with you as a child of God. If you will believe, what does it mean? What is God expecting of me when he wants me to believe? He wants me to trust him. He wants me to rely on him. He wants me to depend on him. And he wants me to rest in him. When you rest in him, the Bible says in Hebrews 4.1, we which have believed, enter into rest. That means when you are resting, you're not worrying. When you are resting, you're not thinking about it. When you are resting, you are at a place of peace. 
And as a child of God, don't you let the things that are coming from the outside get on the inside of you. Because greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. Can you say amen to that? Why don't you lift your hands and give him praise? And let's sing that again. Sing that again.
said hallelujah let me ask you a question this morning the song said it is done how would you act differently knowing that it's already done how would your praise be different knowing that it's all the problem fixed done the situation fixed done how how would you praise him differently because if it's already done then your praise should reflect it's already done it's already done it's already done why are you worrying it's already done it's already it's already it's already done it's already done
believe. I receive. It's already done. So that means the things that need to be moved have been moved. The things that need to be broken have been broken. The impossibilities are moved out of the way and your miracle is here today. I said your miracle is here today. Get ready, your miracle is here today. Get ready, your miracle is here today. Get ready. Hallelujah. This week will be your week for a miracle. This week will be your week for a miracle. Get ready, your miracle is here today. Get ready, your miracle is here today. Somebody give him a shout of praise. Sing it. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I don't want you to miss the part of that song that says, I'm choosing something different. I said, I'm choosing something different. What you choose determines whether you win or lose. I'm choosing something different. I'm choosing to believe God's word in spite of what I see. I'm choosing to believe God's word in spite of what I hear. I'm choosing to believe God's word in spite of what I feel. I'm choosing to believe God's word. How many people are choosing God's word today? Come on, give him the biggest shout of praise you can give him all over this place. I'm choosing something different. I'm choosing something different. I'm not allowing my feelings to choose for me. I'm not allowing people to choose for me. I'm choosing something different. And because I choose something different, I'm speaking something different. I'm acting differently because I'm choosing God's way. Can you say amen to that? Hallelujah. Tell your neighbor, I'm choosing something different. I'm choosing something different. Hallelujah. This week is going to be an amazing week for me. You need to tell them this week is going to be an amazing week for me. I'm expecting miracles this week. Come on, tell them I'm expecting miracles this week. I'm expecting things to be moved this week. Tell them, tell them I'm expecting things to be moved this week. I'm expecting things to break open this week. Tell them, tell them I'm expecting things to break open. Tell them I'm expecting things to turn around this week. Come on, tell them I'm turn things are turning around. You gotta turn around. Let them know things are turning around for me this week. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Things are turning around for me this week. Hallelujah. Somebody ought to give them a shout of praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. You're not waiting to see it. It's already turned. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You know, this past week, two weeks ago, two weeks ago, for the last three weeks, the Holy Ghost has been moving in an unusual way. And I want what He wants. I'm going to follow how He leads. But two weeks ago, when the Holy Ghost started doing some things here in our 8 o'clock service, in our 1030 service, there was a young lady who came up to the altar. The Spirit of God came on my wife, and they started dancing in the Spirit. Two weeks ago. See, sometimes you don't know what your present praise, listen to, no, listen to me, listen to me. Sometimes you don't know what your present praise will do to your future experiences. I said, you don't know what your present praise will do or impact your future experiences. This is why you don't come to church to be reserved. You come to church to bust loose. Come on. <laughs> because listen, in church you're in a place that it's acceptable and understood. You can't do this in your office. You can't do this on your job. But your praise your present praise can have future impact. Two weeks ago, she came up to the altar and danced before the Lord. This past week, her son was in a car accident. When I got there, he was standing outside of the car completely whole, nothing missing, nothing broken. But hear me, not only was his life preserved, if you saw the car, you would think, the, the, the EMT said this was a miracle. Not only was his life preserved, but the three other people were standing outside their car, unhurt, uninjured. See, what I'm trying to tell you, you don't know what your present praise, how it's going to impact your future. 
And this is why when we have an opportunity to praise God, it's not the time to be reserved. It's the time to give God the highest praise because your praise, listen to me, your praise can actually save your children. Somebody give them a shout of praise like you know what I'm talking about. Give God a shout of praise and worship. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to his name. Glory to his name. You should be so focused on him that it doesn't matter who's in the room. You should be praising and worshiping him like all of the things that you're believing God for are going to be impacted. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, your job is going to be impacted. Your health is going to be impacted by your praise and your worship. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you have hands, lift them and give him praise and glory. All over this place, give him praise and glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Just grab your neighbor's hand and jump with them a little bit. Grab your neighbor's hand and just jump with them a little bit. Grab their hand and jump with them a little bit. Give God glory and give him praise all over in the balcony. Give him praise. You don't know what your praise is going to do. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory. Breaking chains. Breaking chains. Breaking chains. Breaking chains. Breaking chains. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Breaking chains. Moving mountains. Creating miracles. Shout of praise. Hallelujah. 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 Breaking every chain, moving mountains, creating miracles. That's the God we serve. The God of miracles. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to his name. 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 Praise you, Father. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Praise you, Father. Glory to God. Say it. Mountains are being moved. Chains are being broken. <clears throat> Miracles are coming my way. Mountains are being moved. Chains are being broken. And miracles are coming my way. I believe it. I receive it. And it is done. Somebody give him praise one more time. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God, glory, glory to God, glory to God. Come on, say it with me. The Lord is good. He's good to me. And his mercy endures forever. Turn to your neighbor and say, the Lord is good. And his mercy endures forever. Come on, say it again. The Lord is good. And his mercy endures forever. See, you don't know what's happening in the spirit. Come on, say it again. The Lord is good. And his mercy endures forever. 
Come on, say it again. The Lord is good. And his mercy endures forever. One more time. The Lord is good. And his mercy endures forever. Come on, give him praise and thanksgiving. Hallelujah. 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 I said hallelujah. Hallelujah. See, sometimes we don't even realize. We don't even realize. We just think we're saying some things. But I'm quite sure that when King Jehoshaphat was surrounded by five armies and the Bible told him to send the praisers first, and as the praisers go out, they didn't sing a new song. All they said is the Lord is good and his mercy endures forever. The Lord is good and his mercy endures forever. The Lord is good and his mercy endures forever. And the Bible says that God set up ambushments against his arm. See, you don't know what's happening in the spirit. Just from a simple phrase, the Lord is good. And his, you don't know what God is setting up on Monday. God is setting some things up on Sunday. God is setting some things up just because a simple phrase, the Lord is good and his mercy endures forever. Come on, say it again. The Lord is good and his mercy, and come on, say it one more time. The Lord is good and his mercy endures forever. If you believe it, give him a shout of praise, church. Hallelujah. Now this week, I want you to expect to see the goodness of God show up in your situation. I want you to expect to see God's mercy show up in your situation. You declare that he's good and his mercy. Expect to see the goodness of God this week. Expect to see the mercies of God this week in the name of jesus can you say amen to that just give him praise and glory and thanksgiving hallelujah hallelujah now that means church you have got to turn loose of worry you cannot worry and worship at the same time so when you're worrying you're not worshiping and one way to combat the worry that will try to bombard your mind is when worry comes, throw your hands up and say, the Lord is good and his mercy endure. You don't have to understand it. You don't have to have an answer. But when the worry comes, don't let the worry run rampant in your mind without challenging it with your faith in God. And you declare and decree it in the name of Jesus that the Lord is good and his mercy endures forever. When worry shows up at your door sill, don't you entertain the worry. You speak to the worry by answering with your faith, by saying the Lord is good and his mercy endures forever. If you believe that, give God a shout of praise. When it looks like listen to me even when it looks like unfavorable things are happening even when it looks like the situation you prayed about is getting bad even when it looks like all hell has broken loose even when it looks like people are questioning the God you serve you're not responsible for what God is going to do you're responsible for giving him praise. Can you say amen to that? It's not your responsibility to perform the miracle. It's not your responsibility to change the things. He said he would do that. What he wants from you is your faith. That's when he's pleased. Hebrews 11:6 tells us that without faith, it's impossible to please God. 
So how are you going to answer when you go to the doctor and he said, things haven't changed? What do you do? Come on, what do you do? The Lord is good and his mercy endures forever. What do you do when it looks like things are delayed and you have a deadline? What do you do when it looks like you're surrounded and you don't know what to do? See, this is how I fight my battles. When it looks like I'm surrounded, I'm surrounded by him. And see, when I'm surrounded by him, that means favor goes before me. Goodness and mercy follows me all the days of my life. So if goodness and mercy is following me and he leads me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake, why am I worrying? If we would learn to worship God instead of worry, things will change a lot faster. Your worrying is not going to change your situation, but your worship will. I said your worship will. And we've got to get in the habit of worshiping God in the midst of trials, in the midst of temptations. The Bible says when you are faced with trials and temptations, count it Count it all what? Joy. Count it all what? Joy. What does joy look like? I said, what does joy look like? You know, one translation says there in James, I think it's James 1, 3, when the, the King James says, count it all joy, one translation says, look at it as an opportunity. You mean to tell me when stuff is coming at me, when I'm being challenged, to look at it as an opportunity? What type of opportunity does challenges present to me? The, the challenges present to you an opportunity to put your faith on display. It gives you an opportunity to put your faith on display because are you going to worship God or are you going to worry about what you see? That's, it gives you an opportunity to praise God. It gives you an opportunity in the midst of your fiery furnace. It gives you an opportunity to depend on the fourth man. It gives you an opportunity to trust in the fourth man. When you are going through your fiery trial, that might be your fiery furnace. Are you going to look to the fourth man or are you going to worry about the heat from the fire? The Bible says count it all joy. Look at it as an opportunity. You up here complaining when you should be rejoicing. See, some of you right now came in here today. You prayed before you got here. God, I need a word. I'm giving you his word right now. You came in here and you prayed and you asked God, God, I need some direction. I know you came expecting something prophetic. You expected something deep. You expected something you never heard before, but I'm here to tell you it's not going to be something new that changes you. It's going to be you doing what you know to do when you are faced with a trial. It's not a new word. It's the same word. Rejoice! See, pressure won't let you rejoice. Pressure makes it hard for you to even lift your hands. You know why pressure makes it hard for you to lift your hands? Because worry is on your back and it weighs you down. But what are the way to get it off of your back? Hey, 
I'm waiting for 100% participation. You know, that's not only a sign of, of, of being free, but it's also a sign of deliverance and surrender. I'm not carrying this anymore. I'm not being weighed down with this anymore. I'm free from this right now. I'm free from it. In the name of Jesus. I said in the name of Jesus. You need to testify to your neighbor on your left and right and say I'm free of what I carried in here. You know, free folks should be acting a little differently than people who are heavy burdened. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Glory to God's name. Hallelujah, hallelujah. 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 Christina, let's sing that song again. Let's sing that song again. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Move the, move the immovable. Break the unbreakable.
Father, you're so faithful. Such a faithful, faithful Father. You said it. I believe it. We declare it's done today. We declare it is done in the name of Jesus. Give him a wave offering, church. He's so good. I'm telling you, he, all, he knows just what we need when we need it. How many of you needed that today? It's a great reminder. I know I did. You said it. I believe it. It's done. It's done. It's done. It's done. It's done. It's done. We're going to turn our worry into worship, right? Hallelujah. It's done. You know, this is the confirmation that you needed coming here today. And see, sometimes we want a specific word to us directly. And God is speaking to us collectively that this is a word of confirmation. But here's the challenge when you have a word from God. That word will be challenged with worry. That word will be challenged with it's not done. That word will be challenged with your circumstances you have to walk back into. And this is why he said, you said it, it's done. Now he said it and it's done. You've got to say it. Ah, it's done. It's done. It's done. It's done. You, you got to understand here, church. When something is done, that means you put a period at the end of the sentence. And from that point on, you're going to have to guard your thought life. You're going to have to guard your mouth because if it's done, do not revisit it. No, you need to let that sink in because in this type of atmosphere, in this type of environment, it's easy to make that commitment. But you can't go and visit that in your thought life. You can't go and visit that with your conversation. When, when people who know about it, try to bring it up, you've got to say, I'm past that. I'm done with that. And not entertain it in conversation. When the enemy tries to bring it in your thought life and that's internal, that's him trying to plant seeds on the inside of you, you've got to learn to worship God and say, the Lord is good. And his mercy endures forever. See, if you don't have a strategic plan when you leave out of here today, the devil's going to make you revisit it in the parking lot. He'll make you revisit it in the parking lot. And this is where you have to guard your heart, according to Proverbs 4.23. It says to keep your heart with all diligence. That word keep means to guard your heart with all diligence. And the way you guard your heart is you guard your ears and you guard your mouth. Notice it said to guard your heart. And then Paul says to Timothy, be a good soldier. So you're going to have to guard your ears. You cannot let people bring up your past. You cannot let people bring stuff up because it will cause you to revisit it. And you've got to guard your heart, guard your mouth, and guard your ears. Because if it's done, it's done. You know right now I stand here done with high school. I don't go back to the school and visit it because I'm done with high school. So I don't go back and visit high school. Been out of school now for 40 something years. Don't watch it. But I don't go back and visit. You have cast the care over on the Lord. All of your cares, all of your anxieties, do not go and pick it back up again. Don't pick it up in your thought life. When the enemy tries to come and say, well, you probably need to check and see how they're doing. Listen, if God can't take care of them, then you can't do better than God.
And so when the enemy brings the thought to your mind, and he will, because we're not ignorant of his devices. When he tries to bring the thought to your mind, you, you, listen, you don't ignore him. You have to speak to him. Jesus didn't ignore him when he was tempted. And when you're tempted, you can't ignore him. You've got to speak what the word says. I roll the care of that over on the Lord. I am not going to worry. I'm going to worship. And you've got to choose to do that, brothers and sisters. In an atmosphere like this, it's easy to commit. But when you step out in that parking lot, he's going to come strong. I like what you said about guarding your ears, your, your eyes, mouth. and your mouth. We also have to guard our emotions. Yeah. Because our emotions can take us to a place that's hard to come back from. You know? But you know what the scripture says? The scripture says in Colossians chapter 3, verse 1 and 2, set your affections. Set them. That word for affections is your emotions. You've got to set them. Do you know when you set the oven at a certain temperature, you don't go back and visit the setting? When you set it, you walk away from it. And what you need to do with your emotions Set your affections. The Bible even tells us where to set it. Set your affections on things above. How do I set my affections on things that are above? I've got to do what Matthew 6.33 says. See, the only way I can set my affections is I've got to seek first the kingdom. If I put the kingdom of God as a priority, then I can set my emotions. But if he's not a priority, you're going to waffle back and forth wavering back and forth. You're wavering back and forth because you're not set. Set your affections on things that are above. It's not, listen, God gave us our emotions for a reason. He didn't give us our emotions to control us. Our emotions are nothing more than indicators. That's all they are. They let us know about the environment we're around in. If, you're, if, 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 if things are happening in a bad environment, your emotions will feel things. You will feel things through your five physical senses. They're just sensory mechanisms for the earth realm. But they're not designed by God to control you. The Bible says in, in, in Romans chapter 8, verse 14, for as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they're the sons and daughters of God. So the emotions are there as just sensory uh, mechanisms to let you know what's happening around you. They're not there to control you. You are responsible for controlling your emotions. When you feel a certain thing, you don't have to act how you feel. You're not supposed to be controlled by the impulses of your flesh. You're supposed to be led at, by the impulse of the Spirit of God. And so you're going to feel things. You're going to walk out of here and your mind, you, you know, your mind is nothing more than a library that keeps the history of your past. And you and I as people of God, we've got to be very selective what we allow our minds to pull out of the library of our past. Are you hearing me, church? And this is why we've got to renew our minds and this is why we've got to be led by the Spirit and this is why we've got to guard our ears and guard our mouth. When you're feeling a certain way, the best thing you can do is speak in alignment with God's Word and not in alignment with how you feel. So set your affection. Put your hands on your heart. And say this with me. Heavenly Father, I believe that I am your child. And I am led by your spirit. I set my affections today on things that are above and not on the things that are on the earth. I make the kingdom of God a priority. And I will be led by the spirit of God. Holy Spirit, I yield to you today. I yield my mind to you. I, I present my body as a living sacrifice to you. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 That was good, right? Well, praise God. You can be seated in his presence. Thank you, praise team. Awesome job today. Let's give our praise team and band a big hand. Praise God.
They dedicate a lot of time to what they do to make sure they come to lead us into worship. Amen. Don't we appreciate them? We do. We do. Well, this time we're going to receive the morning tithes and offerings. You know, yesterday um, I had the opportunity, some of you may know this, um, from time to time we try to take a little bit of time to tell you what, we, what happens with your tithes and offerings. As you're getting your tithes ready, I'm going to talk a little bit. But um, so we made a decision, Pastor, from the, t from the onset of this ministry, that every month, Seeds of Greatness will, will sow 10% of the income of this church out into other ministries, other outreaches, other nonprofits. And we've been doing that for 22 years. And we are blessed because of it. This, this is a blessed church. Amen. Blessed church. All the tithers <laughs> say yes. You know how blessed you are because you're a tither. And this church is blessed because we give out. 10% of at least 10% of what comes in. So uh, one of the um, ministries, uh, it's really a nonprofit. I think it's a ministry, but it's a nonprofit that we sow into is Child Inc. And many of you know about the work that Child Inc. does as it relates to domestic violence awareness. But they have several other programs that they run out of Child Inc. And one, um, anybody ever heard of Brookmont Farms? now called Sparrow Run, they changed the name because the original name had a, a negative uh, connotation because a lot of uh, n not so great things were happening there. But now it's Sparrow Run, um, yeah, Sparrow Run, and Sparrow Run has a, um, a portion of the program. We rent two houses, I'm on the board at Child Inc. We rent two homes um, there in Sparrow Run. One is called um, Family Resource Center. The other is called Child's Place, uh, Child, Kids Place. And the, uh, the program, I'm, so, I'm sorry, I get lost for words. The Family Resource Center celebrated 25 years of being in existence yesterday. So I'm, I'm on the board and I, I just went out to, um, to stop in for a few minutes. Little did I know that Seeds of Greatness would be recognized as a church who supports the work that goes there. So every month, see, in addition to what we do in the domestic violence awareness program, uh, SEED sends a check for Kids Place so that these kids can have great activity. Some of those kids before Child Inc. went out of there never left Newcastle County. But from the money that SEEDS donates, they are able to go to museums in Washington, D.C. They're able to go to the beach. They're able to do different things because exposure equals expansion. If all you see is the neighborhood you li live in and the school you go to, that's what you think the world is. But when we expose these kids to something bigger, something different, it makes them yearn for it. So I had no idea that Seeds was going to be recognized um, from child by Child Inc. at the ceremony they had yesterday. So I just want to thank you all for your, your giving on behalf of that community. You, some of you didn't even know that you were investing in that community, but together we're making a difference. They had a testimonial from one man said he's been living in that neighborhood for many, many years. He said for 15 years he tore that neighborhood down. He did bad things, but then something shifted in him, and for the last 10 years, He's been working to build that neighborhood up. One man said that he got, he lost his job and the, the, uh, the, the Family Resource Center, the folks there helped him and he got his GED over 20 years ago. He got his GED from the program that they have there, got a job with the state of Delaware because he couldn't have gotten the job if he didn't have GED and he retired earl earlier this year. In the second service, if y'all wanna hang around, you're gonna hear another great testimony about what is happening with our tithes and offerings. So, pastors come in, I guess I've been talking no, a long no, time. No, no, I was gonna to say to you, oh. tell them about the computer, the computers oh, yes. that we We have there. a family from Seeds of Greatness. They needed computers there. One of our families 
and they'd like to remain anonymous, donated, I think about 12 or 13 computers, new computers. Yeah. Come back. Yeah. Yeah. So we're making a difference. When you get to heaven, people gonna walk up to y'all that you didn't even know and say, thank you. I love that song. Thank you for giving to the Lord yeah. on my life that was changed. Your tithes and offerings are making a difference. Yeah. They really are. That's good. Thank you, honey. So, you <clears throat> take it from here. I got it. I got your tissue. Oh. <laughs> you got the rest. All right, stand with me. We're going to pray as you give those who are giving electronically by texting. The, uh, the information is on the screen. Uh, those of you who are watching online, you can participate that way or you can go to our website and hit the donate button. If you need an envelope, the ushers have them as well. But we are so thankful for your consistency. Yes. Even throughout the pandemic, our church remained consistent. Praise God. We were out of in-person services for a year. I preached to an empty pews, baby. 13 months. Yeah, yeah. Was, that was something. With the praise and worship team, and we tried to make it feel like it wasn't empty, right, y'all? <laughs> they did a great job <laughs> throughout really that did. time. Yeah. But for 13 months, we were um, not in in-person services, and our tithers and offering givers did not miss a beat. Right. <clears throat> Rick is our finance person, right, Rick? Our, our offerings remain steady and actually increased. Some churches closed. Yeah, yeah, we're thankful to God. We're thankful. We thankful are thankful. So, Father, I thank you for this, this blessed group of people. I thank you, Father, that you meet every one of their needs according to your riches and glory yes. by Christ Jesus. I thank you that as they've given, Father, it will come back to them pressed down, shaken together, and running over, will men give unto their bosoms. God, those who feel like they're on a fixed income, I thank you they're, that their income is not fixed. I thank you for surprises coming to them. I thank you for supernatural blessings coming to them. God, I thank you for, because they give, it comes back to them, not just financially, but on every way that they might need it, in the name of Jesus. We thank you for it, Father. We thank you that for the promise that you gave to the, to the tithers, that the devourer would be rebuked for our sake and the windows of heaven. Windows, plural, windows of heaven are open unto us. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 There was information on your screen you can follow. As people of God, we're not looking for ways not to give to God. We're looking for opportunities to be able to give to the work in the kingdom of God. Can you say amen to that? I want to thank you for your faithful giving, those of you that are viewing online and those of you in the sanctuary. And we join our faith with you for increase in your house, not just increase in your house, but increase for your children. <clears throat> and increase for your children's children. Can you say amen to that? I, you can be seated. I'd like for all of the children that are here to stand, that are going back to school, whether it's college, high school, grammar school, if your children are here, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. If you're around those children, those young people, they don't want to be called children until they need money. But if you're around those young people, I want you to put your hands on them if they will allow you to. If not, stretch your hands towards them. <clears throat> Hallelujah. As they're preparing to go back into our schools, as, as we were instructed by the Spirit of God a few weeks ago, I want to encourage you as parents to get in your car and ride around those schools. People might say it's old-fashioned and, it, and it's, it's very... Uh, out of date, but I want you to ride around those schools and stretch your hands and say, I plead the blood of Jesus over this school, over every teacher, over every bus driver. Listen, we don't want bus drivers driving buses high. Over every bus driver, over every teacher, over every guidance counselor, over every educator, in the name of Jesus, we plead the blood of Jesus over them. And Father, we thank you that our children are in environments 
that are conducive to learning. And we come against any spirit of terrorism or destruction that will come against these young people in college campuses, high schools, uh, technical schools, in the name of Jesus. We plead the blood of Jesus over them, protection over them from the top of their head to the bottom of their feet. We declare over our children that they will be in the right place at the right time with the right teacher in the name of Jesus, that they will be on the right bus at the right time, that they will be protected in the name of Jesus, and Father, that they will fulfill their purpose and assignment. We declare that nobody but Jesus will have our children in the name of Jesus. And Father, we honor you and thank you for them that as they honor their mother and their father, their days will be long on the earth and the blessing of God will be continually on their life. Father, we, we thank you. We thank you that our children are like arrows, that we point them in the direction of you. And Father, we declare that they are fearfully and wonderfully made. And Father, they will perform to the perfection that they were created by the Creator. In the mighty name of Jesus, let's give God praise and thanksgiving for that. <laughs> Hallelujah. 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 You know, uh, I remember hearing one of my Bible school instructors say this. He said, when you study, study as if there is no Holy Ghost. But when you teach, teach as if there is nothing but the Holy Ghost. So what is he saying? There is a natural diligence that we have to put in of studying and preparing ourselves. And then at the same time, be willing to yield to the Holy Spirit in whatever direction that he wants to go in. This morning, the Holy Spirit took us in a totally different direction. I, I thought I had a great message. It's a great message. But if he says to go in this direction, I know how to put this on hold. I said, I know how. I know how to put this on hold and let his plan unfold. And that's the most important thing that we could ever do. <clears throat> I've said this to you before. But it bears repeating, in our services, the most important personality in the room is the Holy Spirit. Amen. Seeds of greatness is not personality driven, it's Holy Spirit led. Amen. And more than anything in the entire world, we want what God wants because if we follow his plan, then your needs are going to be met. And that's the most important thing when we come together in this sheepfold is that the sheep needs are met. Amen. And I really believe today that the Spirit of God ministered to us on a, on a whole different level that we had anticipated. Can you say amen to this? Amen. Once again, I want to encourage you to come out to these services. Uh, thank you for viewing online, but I can honestly tell you that it is better in person. Amen. There is something... There's something to be said about the corporate anointing when we come together as people of God. When we make the effort to come together as people of God, God always responds. Hear me. He always responds to hunger and expectation. Those that hunger and thirst after righteousness will be filled. The blind man at the gate in Acts chapter 3, the Bible says he came expecting to receive something of them. And they said, silver and gold have I not, but such as I have. And I really believe today that the Spirit of God ministered to us all today. Amen. We have received from the Lord this morning. Amen. I said, we have received from the Lord this morning. Amen. And I want to encourage you as a child of God, don't let your worship stop in the house. Amen. And don't let any pressure silence your worship. Scripture says in the book of Peter, think it not strange concerning the fiery trials as though some strange thing is happening to you because the same thing is happening in our brother. It says the devil goes about as a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. It says whom resists steadfast in faith. Faith is important to you as a child of God. The word of God is important to you. Don't you ever let anybody tell you that faith is not important. 
Because without it, number one, you can't please God. And number two, you can't even resist the devil. So faith is very important to you as a child of God. You have the same spirit of faith that the Apostle Paul had on the inside of him. You believe? Talk to me. You believe? Okay, if you believe, then speak what you believe. Don't speak what you see. Don't speak what you feel. Speak what you believe. It looks bad, things are changing for me. It looks empty, God's going to fill my cup. You got to speak what you believe. It's so important. You might have a doctor's appointment this week, and it might not be as favorable as you want it to be. Well, the doctor is practicing medicine. And thank God for doctors. Thank God for doctors. But we are connected to the great physician. Can you say amen to that? Your connection with him can change the direction of your life. He's the vine, we're the branches. Our life is sustained from him. And I want to encourage you this week, you're going to face challenges. People are going to say things that you don't agree with. You're going to hear reports that might not be in alignment with what you believe. Speak what you believe. One of the most powerful things besides the word of God that you have at your arsenal is your mouth. It has power. Proverbs 18, 21 says that death and life are in the power of your tongue, not the devil. He doesn't have power over you as a child of God. You are a child of God. I said you are a child of God. And when you leave this place today, you walk in confidence. Knowing that your situation that you came in here with is changing. Now I'm going to tell you, today in the natural you might not see any evidence. It's almost like in Mark 11 when Jesus spoke to the fig tree. After he spoke, he walked about his regular routine. And it looked like when he spoke to it, nothing changed. But the next morning, he saw what he spoke to the previous day had dried up from the root. Sometimes when you speak faith-filled words, it looks like from the natural, nothing has changed. But once you release your faith, let your faith do the work. Because sometimes work is taking place underground that you don't even see. When Jesus spoke to that fig tree in Mark 11, 23, 24, he spoke not to the fruit. He spoke to the root. The scripture says it dried up from the root. Today we killed some root. We killed some root. Some stuff that was underground. So that means when Jesus came back 24 hours later, he saw it dried up from the root and it was withered. Understand what you spoke today, you might not see evidence, but it doesn't mean things aren't changing. Things are changing. He has broken some things that were unbreakable in the natural. He has moved some things that were unmovable. And he has put you in position for a miracle. And I want to encourage you to hold fast to your confession of faith. Let what you said today stay done. Don't go and undo it. Because you still see fruit of it. Don't go and undo it because you still see fruit of it. What you spoke to today was to the root. And having done all to stand, you stand therefore.
there are things taking place that you don't see any evidence of change yet. But let's stay said what you already spoke. Can you say amen to that? Amen. Won't you stand with me? Thank you, Jesus. Father, I declare over your people the 91st Psalm. I declare that they dwell in the secret place of the Most High God. And under the shadow of the Almighty do they abide. Father, I declare the 23rd Psalm over your people. That you are our shepherd. And Father, you always provide for us. Father, I thank you that we are in the right place at the right time. We thank you for being a miracle worker, a problem fixer, a time and, and situation regulator. And Father, we thank you today that we believe your unseen hand is working behind the scene on our behalf. That things are working together, all things, all things, all things are working together for my good because I love God and I am called according to his purpose. In Jesus' name, if you receive that, give God praise and thanksgiving. Hallelujah. What a word this morning. Aren't you glad you attend a church that is governed by the Holy Spirit? It's amazing. You can be seated. I'm just going to touch on a few announcements. And if you can, uh, for those announcements that I do not touch on, we have QR codes throughout the building that you could uh, keep yourself abreast on. But oh, as always, we're expecting first-time guests here at Seeds. If this is your very first time, can you please stand? You do not have to say anything. We just want to acknowledge you. Any first-time guests? Anyone? I hear clapping, but I don't see. Ah, welcome, welcome. Welcome, welcome to Seeds Church. Welcome, welcome. We're honored to have you with us. And for those of you who are viewing online, we welcome you. To, uh, thank you for tuning in. And for those of you who are present, as you can see, there's a code, SOG NEW, and you can text it to 28950. We just want to stay connected with you, and thank you for choosing to worship with us this morning. Amen. And um, our Dominion group, which is our age group 30 to 39 connection, yes. So they're having a meet and greet on September the 11th after 1030 service, and they will be providing food. So we ask if you, between 30 and 39, come out. It's going to be an amazing time. And also our marriage boot camp for the month of September, every Thursday at 7 p.m., we're going to be here learning about some things. And if you have an amazing marriage, that's great. But as you know, as married couples, we go through different seasons. Amen. And it is important that we keep ourselves connected and grounded in the word, but most importantly, understanding how to maneuver around the different seasons. So every Sunday, 7, uh, no, not Sunday, sorry, Thursday, 7 p.m., but you do have to register. Um, if you text the code SOGMW and the to 28950. And again, that's S O G M W, and the number is 28950. Vacation Bible School is coming up. Let me tell you guys, we're almost maxed out. Today is the last day to register. That is amazing. That is amazing. So please do not procrastinate. Please, 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 please. Register today if you would like to be a part. And the code is up on the screen. That's S-O-G-V-B-S. And the number you would text that code to is 28950. And the date is August 27th. It's a one-day event from 9.30 a.m. to 3.30 p.m. And the grades are 9 to 8. And that's 9.30 a.m., excuse me, to 3.30 p.m. And on Wednesday, August 24th, we're having a workers and leaders, meet, leaders meeting. And dinner will be provided from 5.45 to 7 p.m. The meeting will start promptly at 7 p.m. So we ask that you please, if you're currently a member to attend or currently serving in any capacity, you are welcome to attend. 
Wednesday, August the 31st is a family night where we will have dinner from 5.45 to 7 p.m., followed by prayer and Bible study. And the topic at hand will be family feud. So, and also communion will be served. So we ask that you please come out to that as well. So please have an amazing week. If you want to stay for another service, you're welcome to do so. And I'll see you guys on Wednesday night.